Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the webinar, Engaging Anglers Through Technology, the MDC Story. My name is Tim, and I'll be your moderator for today's session. This session will be provided via both audio and web conference. Today's session is being recorded, and all participant lines will be muted during the session. This program will last for approximately 45 minutes and will include specific question and answer opportunities at the end of the program. If you have a question at any point during today's presentation, you may submit it via the questions box located in the GoToWebinar toolbox on your screen. Our speakers for today are Alex Prentice and Lowell Ballard. Alex has been working with GIS Technologies for the Missouri Department of Conservation for over the last five years. He has developed GIS data sets and applications to improve fisheries, division operations, and communicate fishing opportunities, regulations, and resources to the public. In 2016, Alex was part of a team that was awarded the Esri Special Achievement in GIS Award for their work in implementing an enterprise GIS. Lowell Ballard is a recognized leader in the integration of geospatial and traditional information technologies and GIS strategic planning. Lowell is a regular contributor, contributing author in a national publication as, and has been profiled by Esri as an industry expert. His numerous awards and recognition have included an honor award by the U.S. Forest Service Chief, New York Regions Canada Special Achievement in GIS, and numerous Esri awards. The growth of his group has allowed for the development of many new mobile and desktop applications and technological achievements in spatial integration. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Alex and Lowell. Alex and Lowell, please go ahead. Thank you very much for the introduction, Tim. I'm going to go ahead and start things off. Uh, I appreciate everyone attending today. Um, we uh, were excited to highlight our fishing application and discuss what it took to get here. Um, as you likely know, it, it takes a lot of uh, folks involved with this um, and a lot of uh, willingness to, uh, to go the extra mile to build these things. So um, with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Lowell to get us kicked off. Thanks, Alex. Um, so we as a company work with a lot of state agencies, forestry, fisheries, wildlife, um, regulatory agencies, and uh, DOTs, and pretty much all of them, um, everybody's out there dealing with the same thing, which is that there's, um, uh, it's not a nice to have that you address your client's needs with um, mobile technology and smartphones and work with them uh, in the way in which they want to work. It's, it's, it's an expectation now that you should deliver services on mobile technologies and all the different form factors that they use. Um, and for this purpose, um, we have a slide up here that basically, you know, whether it's a true fact or not, it's quoted a lot that there are more uh, smartphones or cell phones in the world than there are toothbrushes. And, um, you know, this is a picture I took at an airport myself, and there was a couple monks there, and they, um, you know, were both on their cell phones and just very, um, you know, very indicative of what's going on in the world today. And, you know, my mom, who's 80, is on Facebook all the time, and, you know, it's just, something that you have to live with these days. Uh, so the way we're going to do this webinar is um, Alex is going to take over in just a second and what he's really going to do is he's going to talk about what exists today and what the application looks like today and, and sort of um, you know what we've ultimately matured to through um, uh, through the, the years and then he's going to pass it off to me about halfway through and I'm going to explain the process we use to build these applications and how we got requirements and all the other uh, very interesting pieces. So um, with that, I'll kick it back over to Alex. All right. Thanks, Lowell. Um, what you're seeing here is the splash screen for the Mo Fishing application. Uh, the demo I'm going to show you in these slides is on the iPad version, but we have it for iPad and also Android. So this application is a water body centric app that helps users locate and explore information about close to home fishing opportunities. Of the 980 plus Missouri Department of Conservation managed water bodies, uh, in the app, Missourians are an average of three quarters of a mile as the crow flies from a water body and are at most 25 miles from a water body. The app provides a user interface that includes access to various fishing resources, fishing reports, regulations, and the ability to purchase and display licenses and permits. 
In the opening screen of the application, it opens to a water body search. Uh, the water body search automatically uh, queries based on a user's location, water bodies near them, and lists them at, in uh, order of proximity. So the closest water body would be at the top of the list. In the right side of the screen, this provides details about the water body, <coughs> including a contact number, uh, some of the f facilities or amenities, and also whether they're ADA compliant. Selecting the water body from the list will open up that details page. In the main menu of the application, you can also access the water body search. By doing this, you can set your location to uh, a location different from the device. And in that order, you can search by address, city, or zip code, or by the water body name. In this instance, I search for Table Rock Lake. When you select the water body from the list, a details page will display showing that contact information, and as well as special regulations if they apply on that water body. Selecting the map icon will open to a full map. In the mapping feature of the application, we display the fish attractor structures as they pertain to that water body. You'll notice that the icons represent the, the fish attractor structure type. Uh, we did this to make it easy to, for our users to understand what they're fishing. And out of the 980 uh, water bodies that we manage, 36 of those water bodies have these structures. And in a total statewide, uh, we have over 4,000 of these structures placed and mapped. As you can see here, a fish attractor structure was selected and it was identified as a hardwood structure. We built this in so that people could get used to uh, understanding and learning what the fish attractor structure icons mean and, and would no longer need to actually tap on the icons to tell what was there. You can also use the water body search to search for target species. Every year our biologists identify best bets for those different water bodies throughout the state. And those best bets are listed uh, and included or incorporated into the app and associated with water bodies. So in this instance, I searched for blue catfish. And that returned this list you see here. Now once I've searched for blue catfish, I can also favor it by hitting the star symbol and uh, by favoriting a water body, it will um, make it appear at the top of the list, as you see here. If I select best bets from down in the bottom of the details page, it will list not only the species that I search for, uh, it will list all of the species that are uh, identified as best bets for that water body. Selecting the Prospects tab down at the bottom of the water body details will open up a verbal description of the water body uh, that is provided by our biologist. This gives a more detailed picture of what's there and what can be expected of a fishing event at that location. If you open up the map function of the application for that, that water body, you can see the amenities as they pertain to the location of the water body. Selecting one of those locations will pop up a, uh, a pop-up that you can tap and get directions in your external application or your navigation application uh, on your device. The app also includes a fish guide, and this can be accessed through the main menu. The fish guide contains quite a bit, quite a few species, and is geared towards helping users understand what they're catching or identifying it if needed. It gives a, a in-depth verbal description and also lists similar species and the size expectation for those species. One big piece of the app is uh, breaking down some of the common barriers associated with regulations and users not necessarily knowing if they can fish 
uh, and, and abide by those regulations or not. So we've included them in this application to make it easy as possible um, to understand what users can do, where they can go, and what they can fish for. Selecting a species from that list will show you more information about the regulation. We've also included permits in the application. This allows users to not only access permits they may have purchased from an outside vendor or uh, on our website, but also to um, download them and store them on their device. This is a, a really handy function because users often, uh, you know, have their cell phone with them while they're fishing, but, um, but may not have uh, their actual permit or printed permit as it was in the past. If, they, if a user's on the way to, um, to go fishing or uh, was not necessarily planning to go fishing and hadn't purchased their license yet, we also provided the ability to purchase their license through this application so they can do it on the fly on the way to their fishing trip. And with that, I'll turn it over to Lowell to tell you what it took to get there. All right. Thanks, Alex. Um, so, uh, you know, as we mentioned in the beginning, we've sort of started with the end and, and what we have now. And, um, you know, there's obviously a lot of very cool features that are in there. And um, I think it's, it's good to know, like when you look at this screen, that um, we've had multiple iterations. We were dealing with things like BlackBerry when we first started this and, you know, Windows Mobile and other, other devices. and, and we were also relatively judicious about um, not just adding new features every time we wanted to do something, but there are a lot of features that we started with that we realized people really didn't use or were confusing to users. And you know, we 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 uh, we trimmed trimmed features out as much as we added new features in. So um, um, you know, it's just a continual you know maturation process, and um, uh, pretty proud where we are though now. So. Um, you know, th we're gonna we're gonna go under the covers a little bit or behind the curtain or whatever, and we're just gonna show a little bit about sort of operationally how we work with um, um, with Missouri Department of Conservation, how we work with Missouri Department of Conservation's IT, and then how they uh, specifically work with quote unquote um, the resource division, so forestry, fisheries, wildlife, and in this case, fisheries. So um, again, you know, we, we've sort of, uh, both our groups, Missouri and um, Timmins, have sort of honed their process and how we work together. And, um, you know, this is a, an overall chart that helps graphically depict the way that we work through a project. Everything from coming up with um, strategic plans and coming up with priorities, like Mo Fishing being a priority, and then coming up with what that looks like, who's going to use it, um, you know, technical requirements, user requirements, uh, coming up with visual artifacts so we can kind of paint a picture before we start working, and then how we actually go through and build it and um, have checkpoints for whether we do or don't build it. So uh, we're going to carve up this diagram and just talk a little bit about each of the sections of the process. So this is what happens in the initiation of the project, and in the room we would typically have stakeholders from MDCIT, um, we would have uh, stakeholders from the business, um, and we would have our own, you know, business analysts and developers involved um, in the project. So we like to have a vision. It helps us get grounded. Um, we have had name changes in the in the past, so you'll see represented on here. We've got a name change, uh, but this really just sets the tone for, you know, as a group, what are we hoping to get out of this, and and what does success look like uh, for us at the end of this project? You know, we want it to be educational. We want people to understand, <clears throat> you know, the things that Alex spoke to, you know, what the fish species are, the limits, um, and we want the application to be fun to use. And um, and I think some of the stuff we'll, we'll show that's going to be coming up in the future in the application, you know, really going to be pretty groundbreaking. So we won't we won't over engineer these objectives, but we will come up with a list of objectives. We obviously want downloads. Um, we want to increase and remove um, impediments. So every every state fish and wildlife agency is focused on you know recruitment, retention, re-enrollment, uh, reactivation, et cetera. Those are drivers for the agency. <clears throat> but um, like we also want it to be fun, and and we want to reward anglers in Missouri for using the app and um, and getting outdoors and. Um, you know, finding those opportunities because Missouri is extremely rich uh, with with resources. So the way we typically start any project is um, 
we, we want to understand who the users are and what motivates them and what drives them. So this is a real artifact that came from um, a project in you know Missouri with MDC and and this was an artifact of where we were breaking the hardcore fishermen away from somebody who wants to find a local urban you know fishing opportunity. And, and, and this really just says, you know, what do we know about them? What are their behaviors and what motivates them? So here you see a different person who cares about the type of bait they're using, barometric pressure, you know, specific locations, and um, really just different motivating factors. And we want to try to do our best to meet the needs of both of these really important uh, classes of users in the state. So once we figure out the who and uh, you know the why, then we start focusing on the what. And so this is where we get into user stories and the technical requirements, and this builds what's called our quote-unquote backlog of the things that are going to get built that allows us to rank those. So this is a little bit difficult to read, uh, but it is sort of what it is in terms of um, the complexity of it. But these are really just um, user stories. I want to be able to do something as this person so that I can accomplish some goal. And and we're we're very good at working with the like fisheries in this case to sort these things and rank them so that there there is a sense of priority in the, in in terms of what you're going to build, and that all things aren't created equal. So we're we're very um, adamant about you know force ranking this backlog of user stories. So once we understand what we're going to build, then we have to we have to focus a little bit on the how. And um, so we get into the technical requirements, you know, how scalable security things, where we're going to host the data, whether it's going to contain real live data, um, how often the data is going to change, you know, how we're going to record stuff, conservation IDs, all those things come into play. Um, now we, we get to the fun part, which is, okay, now we sort of understand the how, the why, uh, the what, et cetera. Um, now we get into, you know, what we call wireframing. So before we put all the app developers working on it, uh, we try to get out there and sort of etch a sketch out, like what the workflows and the screens would look like. And especially when you're dealing with non-technical people, we didn't have that situation with Alex and, and MDC, but a lot of times it's hard for them to sort of visualize how things are going to look. So this is a relatively inexpensive way for us to set expectations and um, <clears throat> help people understand uh, before we start actually developing code what it's going to look like. Once we get the wireframes done, uh, what we will typically do is not on every screen, but we would try to quote unquote beautify uh, select screen. So what we've done here, as you can see the bottom left, um, our, our graphic interface designer put the color palette and the colors in there. Well, we try to use sort of gender neutral colors in most cases and um, we try to you know pick a theme that matches the agency's theme in this case and um, it just gives you a better feel for what the app will look like once it's built. So once we get through all of that we do a checkpoint and we say hey should we really go build this thing or should we um, should we basically stop the project because we don't feel like it's it's the right thing. Um, so in this case, we actually build it, and you can see the sprints at the bottom. Typically, every two weeks, we try to deliver what we call slices of functionality or slices of product. You know, that gives people like Alex a shot at looking at it. It gives them a shot at testing it. It gives them a shot at saying, you know, this really isn't what I was thinking, and then we can go back to the backlog, and we can sort of iterate through until we end up with a successful um, release at the end. So um, now we're going to talk just for a few minutes about some of the um, the, the other cool things that uh, are potentially planned um, for the future. And a lot of this is based on feedback from, from users and also a little bit based on the strategic planning that Missouri has done. Um, so there is an Angler journal that exists now. Um, anglers basically will keep track of, you know, barometer, moon, air temp, water temp, uh, more specifically, they care about where they caught something, how many they caught, what they caught, um, you know, what what bait they were using, what attractor, what lure, um, you know, fly fishing, bait casting, whatever. And we want to we want to ultimately, um, you know, replace paper forms where we can with high priority needs and and put them into a digital format. This is probably the most exciting <clears throat> thing that we're working on Missouri with is this sense of an ecosystem of applications and within those applications um, there's a sense of community, there's a sense of badging and rewarding, sort of like Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts and being rewarded with um, badges and, and 
um, you know, being able to level up with things that you do. And we want we want the the, the visitors and the and the residents of Missouri when they use this and they catch fish and they have success, we want them to be rewarded with these badges. So here's sort of a quick list of um, you know draft badges that we came up with for for mo fishing, and you can see you know I'm using different um, you know I'm fishing in the rain, I'm fishing in sunny days, overcast. Um, you know I caught ten fish, I caught different species of fish. I was on different conservation areas and I had success. All of those things would be ways to keep you engaged and keep you coming back. And then you could integrate that with social media and share it with other people. So um, a, a key thing that we also want to strive is um, a lot of the work we do with state agencies, they really, they see the things that are going on like with Missouri. I've shown this to hundreds of people and everybody wants to get there. Um, a key thing that we always try to strive for is that, you know, we showed those, one of the best features of the application is that they have fish attractors, but the only way that we can actually pull that off and, and make that accessible to the app is, you know, when the, when the, um, the biologists at MDC are out there, you know, burying or, or dumping these fish attractors off of barges in managed water bodies, of which there are several different types, and there's a lot of different water bodies, 36 and 4,100 structures. You know, we have to have that data in a GIS format it's got to be clean and consistent data. You know, we need to have the GPS plus also what kind of, um, you know, whether it's a cedar tree or a pallet or whatever. So we've got to get the bodies on the left, putting it into a format we can use and accessible. And that's, that's really a big take home is that without good, clean, powerful data, we can't, we can't build powerful apps. And that's, um, you know, a big take home. So, um, some of the keys to success um, and, you know, the awesome partnership we have with the uh, Department of Conservation in Missouri, it's just a list. I won't read through all of them, but probably the biggest lesson learned in the 10 years we've been working with them is, you know, we have to have, quote, unquote, the, the business side or the resource dis division side engaged. So in this case, it's Alex. Um, and we, we need to have them in a position where they're making the decisions, they're making the call on what's in and what's out. You know, they're helping to test it, they're helping to validate it, and, um, you know, it's, it's our job and Missouri IT's job to, to deliver on those promises. And, um, you know, a lot of visibility and also delivering product every two or three weeks is, is much, much better than coming back in six months and delivering something for them to look at. Um, so those are really the, the big key take-homes. With that, um, we're now ready to pop back over to Tim. We probably have a few questions coming in. And um, Alex and I will do our best to take any questions. Thank you, Lowell. At this time, we, we will again be taking questions from our participants. Please use the questions box in the GoToWebinar toolbox on the side of your screen to submit a question. A copy of today's PowerPoint is available to attendees upon completion of today's program. If you'd like to obtain a digital copy of today's PowerPoint presentation, please email the addresses that you see provided on your screen. And at this time, we do have several questions in the queue. Uh, it looks like, Alex, the first one is for you. Um, one of the primary goals you listed was to increase fishing permit sales. Has the app increased sales? That's a great question. Um, I do not have a, a solid number on whether or not the app has uh, increased sales, but I can say that we've seen an increase in the amount of sales through mobile applications in general, as well as on our website. So people are, uh, I, I get a lot of user feedback um, about the permits functionality in the app. Uh, people love being able to access their permits on their phone, uh, store their login information and have those permits ready. Uh, and they also, like I said, a, a common occurrence is folks are on the way to go fishing or, you know, it's late Friday night and they get invited to go Saturday morning. They don't have time to go to the store, so um, they can pop onto their their fishing app, uh, buy their permit right there, and, and have it with them ready to go the next morning. So, um, base, yeah, we have seen an increase in in uh, mobile and online permit sales. Fantastic. And uh, the next question is from Ryan. Uh, the question was, any of this developed or coordinated with RBFF in your state? RBFF, Recreational Boating, and I'm forgetting the FF. Um, 
Fishing Foundation, I think. Fishing Foundation. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, uh, that, that probably alludes to my answer. Um, we didn't uh, necessarily reach out uh, regarding any of this, uh, but we do work um, closely with, with those agencies and, um, and foundations. Great. The next question I have is from Dave. Uh, any idea if Oregon is looking at this? Um, I, I can, this is Lowell. Um, no, I, um, I have talked to ODFW uh, a lot actually about, um, you know, some of the things that we've been doing in the country. And, um, you know, I do know that they have paper things like 50 places to go within 10 miles of, of Portland and some other things. And, uh, you know, Oregon's an awesome state and um, I would love to see him do something like this, but um, I, I don't I don't have a clear answer other than we've definitely shown them and I know that they're excited about what Missouri's doing for sure, especially the the things coming up. I was out there a couple of weeks ago and I showed them the badging and reward stuff and I believe they're absolutely in tune with the, the fact that that's the direction that they need to go in other states to help with recruitment retention problems. Perfect. It uh, looks like we have a couple of others here. The um, next question is from Marcy. Uh, here in Arizona, we have a focus of engaging our Hispanic and Latino communities. Do you have this app in a Spanish version? If not, is there plans to create a Spanish version of the app? Great question. That is a great question. Um, I, uh, I've had a, a, a minor discussion uh, related to this issue, and um, one of the hardest things about doing that is effectively communicating uh, our regulations in, in various languages. Um, I do know that, that there is a desire um, to move in that direction and make it easier, um, but I don't know uh, the level or, uh, or kind of the timing for when, when that'll happen. But it is, uh, in my opinion, you know, a, a need and um, would be desirable to have uh, to make it more accessible and, and usable. Fantastic, and it uh, looks like our questions are continuing to roll in here. Um, the next question is actually from Elizabeth. Uh, Lola, I believe this is probably geared towards you. Uh, how, do you how did you implement gamification? Is it automated? For instance, how is the user notified they've received a badge? Does M MDC sorry, post to social media also? Um, so we haven't built the gamification. That's all in the what's coming up section, and um, we're starting to work on that on a couple fronts with Missouri right now. Um, we're probably going to do it. There's a lot of good research that's out there, and we have a lot of gamers that work here, and we actually acquired a game company um, and folded them into our group. So um, typically the way it works is once you complete some sort of activity, you're presented with a badge on your screen, and it stays inside of your profile. Um, so you, you probably might have caught a little bit of that in some of the wireframes that were on the screen, but basically there's a history of things that you've done. You're rewarded with badges. Those stay with your profile on the application. Um, you would have to have a profile on the app um, and not be sort of um, a guest user in order to store those badges and, and keep them on there. The idea is that you would also be able to go to a website within like sort of mymdc.gov or whatever and you would be able to see your list of badges but also download your um, your angler journal um, <clears throat> and be able to map that in google earth or anywhere else but um typically the way that it works is once you're rewarded with a badge it's presented it's stored with your profile but then you're also able to share it out um, either on facebook you know instagram you know twitter whatever and with the goal of helping your your network peers realize that you're out on the ground, you're doing something fun, you're having a good time, you know, you earn this cool badge, and hopefully uh, inciting others to get out and do the same thing is always the goal. Great. Uh, I'm going to wrap up these last couple of questions here momentarily, but uh, if there are any questions beyond or in any more in-depth, obviously we did want to make certain that we pointed out to uh, both the contact information for Lowell and Alex that's up on the screen right now. Uh, I know that there would be more than happy to expand questions beyond what we're able to answer during the webinar. Uh, the next question is, um, actually for both of you, is simply what are the largest lessons learned or the biggest lessons learned through this process? And uh, that question is from Tim. I, I I can go ahead and, <clears throat> and start with that on, on my end. Um, I, I think the biggest lesson learned for, uh, for fisheries and in and, uh, and my role in this application is uh, kind of what uh, Lowell commented on during the presentation that the quality of the data and, and 
um, you know, having a clear definition of what you want to uh, provide to users and building the data um, is is really the biggest step. And, and the lesson learned there is that you uh, can get yourself in trouble by trying to make it perfect right from the get-go. The most valuable tool I've learned so far is um, that feedback loop uh, with users. So there are certain things we found out about, you know, our, our conception of how to best display those fish attractors. Uh, you know, from users, they've, they've provided us great comments and feedback on how to improve that. So I, I guess to summarize the lesson there is, uh, you know, strive for, for, strive for perfection, uh, but, uh, you know, definitely don't let it hold you back. Uh, get it out there and, and start getting it in users' hands because that's where you're going to learn the most. Yeah, and I, I would echo that sentiment. I mean, when we first launched this thing, um, you know, the <clears throat> sometimes the comments in like you know the iTunes Store and, and Google Play, you know, you you get some junky comments, but the, the the nuggets of gold in there. Hey, I really wish you had managed water bodies for you know X Y Z Lake, which you know it it was a data it was a data issue on our side where the data did exist, it just wasn't in the app because we couldn't get it from the field to the app and. You know, like Alex said, I'm glad we put the attractors out there for the lakes we had because it helped us understand that we had data gaps and, you know, to get those in a better place and figure out how to display them better. You know, probably my lesson learned, the biggest one, is when we first started building this, it was really Timmins and MDCIT working on it solo, and when, and we didn't we didn't really engage fisheries very well, and, and um, you know, that just wasn't the appropriate way to do it. It's their app. You know, they're out there dealing with the public. Um, they understand what data they have, what's relevant, and, and it should really be a lot of their decisions, and, you know, we're there to support and help them be successful. Um, you know, the other thing, Alex, I would probably say really quick is maybe, um, I think the other value of an app like this is a lot of times you get phone calls about, hey, where's the boat ramp? Hey, you know, where have you done, you know, habitat work, or where, what are the regs? the amount of time that it probably takes from your staff while you have different types of questions i would imagine it's reduced some of the burden um hopefully of your staff it's just a guess yeah definitely definitely and uh and on that note you know the the way the app functions with identifying close to home fishing opportunities and, and querying based on location you know it's showing people a lot of water bodies that they didn't even know existed or maybe were managed by the department so it's really making our resources a lot more accessible here yeah, that's awesome. That's part of the goal of the project, so that's awesome. Alex and Lowell, uh, that concludes our questions at this point. Did either of you have a comment to wrap up before we hit the end of today's session? I just appreciate everyone who attended, and uh, Tim and Lowell for your work on this and uh, putting the webinar together. Thanks a bunch. Yep, and uh, echo the same, and uh, appreciate you being part of the project, Alex, as well, and everybody who attended it. and. Um, being such a good quote-unquote product owner so uh, can't do it without you that concludes our online program thank you to our presenters and to all of today's participants the program has now ended and you may disconnect